In this video, we create a Monterey installer ISO, the first step toward a clean installation of macOS on VirtualBox for Windows. Hello everyone, and welcome to TechFix Flicks, and welcome to the fifth major edition in our series installing macOS on Windows, following on from our previous tutorials featuring Hi Sierra, Mojave, Catalina, and Big Sur. Our objective as ever is to perform an entirely clean installation of macOS, without resorting to the downloadable hard drive images which are utilised in the vast majority of tutorials found on the internet, and the theoretical risks to device safety and data security which they potentially pose. We achieve this by creating our own installation media, using entirely free tools. It's important to state from the outset that our method requires access to a device which is already running macOS, and this is because there's no Windows based equivalent of the create install media command, which runs exclusively on macOS. The Mac will also require a significant amount of free drive space, and we'll be working with multiple temporary files, each of which is just below 20 gigabytes in size. Should there be insufficient space to proceed, the creation process will halt part way through. Users of virtual Macs should take particular care to ensure adequate storage, and we allocated 100GB to guarantee successful completion. We're splitting this tutorial into a three part series. In this episode, we'll create the installation ISO on a Mac by downloading the installer app from the App Store, then performing a series of seven commands in Terminal, which will transform the downloaded app into an ISO file, which can be transferred to Windows and used as the boot media for a virtual machine. In the second part of the series, we'll create and configure our virtual machine hardware on Windows, before supplying additional data via the command prompt, enabling the machine to function. In the third and final instalment, we'll run the virtual machine, performing its initial configuration and out of box experience setup. Before embarking on this project, you should be aware that the process can be challenging, with each step dependent upon the successful completion of its predecessor, although we'll walk through all of the steps in this video. We'd strongly urge you to copy and paste any commands from the written description accompanying this video, as well as any updates we post at techfixflix.com. You should also set realistic expectations for the performance of your virtual Mac, and be aware that it will in no way match that of genuine Apple hardware. You are likely to experience noticeable lag, reduced hardware support, some software incompatibility, and the absence of input and output for audio devices, resulting in the lack of sound. Finally, we receive many requests to send or publish the ISO file which this project creates. We politely refuse all such requests, as we have no intention of breaking Apple's copyright, so please don't ask for the file. If you don't have access to a Mac, this project isn't for you, and you should look elsewhere for alternative options. The entire rationale behind this tutorial is to present an option for those people who prefer the safety of creating their own installation media to downloading the work of a third party, with the risks that may entail. We begin on the Big Sur desktop, although you can use any version of macOS on a device which itself meets the hardware requirements for Monterey. We open the App Store, and if it isn't immediately visible from the home page, we perform a search for Monterey. If you aren't offered Monterey, it's possible that the machine you're using doesn't meet its hardware requirements, and you may need to look to another machine. Note that machines created from our Virtual Mac series will offer this update. Here we see Monterey offered, surprisingly as the fourth option, and we scroll down to view it, clicking to open its store page, where we click get. This commences a check for updates. Once concluded, we are asked whether we are sure, and click download to proceed. The download commences, and at 12.13GB at the time of this video's publication, may take some time to complete, offering the opportunity for a break. As ever, our videos aren't presented in real time, allowing us to jump to the conclusion of the download, where a further check for updates follows, before we are advised that we are ready to install on this machine. We don't want that, and instead need to find the installer app which has just been downloaded to our system. We therefore click to minimise the open window. We also close any open windows from the download process and the app store, returning us to the uncluttered desktop, from where we launch Finder. Within Finder, we navigate to Applications. We need to ensure that the app Install macOS Monterey is in our Applications folder, where we would normally expect to find it by default. If it's located anywhere else on your system, you should move or copy it to the Applications folder. This is because the typed commands we'll soon enter expect to find it there, and those commands will fail to find it should it be located elsewhere. Equally important is the name of the app. 
our commands expect it to be called install macOS Monterey, and again this is the default. Any other name won't work with the typed commands. So for example, the Monterey beta application has an entirely different name, and won't work unless our commands were modified. Now we've confirmed the name and location of our installer, the next phase is to convert this macOS app to an ISO which can be processed by VirtualBox on Windows. We therefore scroll down and open the Utilities folder, where we click to run Terminal. The Terminal window opens, and we've closed the Open Finder window in order to concentrate purely on our work in Terminal. We can also optionally close the Monterey installer, assuming that we have no intention of updating the Mac we're currently using, by right clicking on the running Install macOS Monterey app, and from the menu which appears selecting the option to quit, before confirming our intentions by again selecting quit at the pop up. We now return to Terminal, where we'll enter 7 commands which take the downloaded installer app as a starting point, and create a bootable ISO file by the conclusion of the process. As a reminder, all of these commands are found in the written description accompanying this video, and will be posted on techfixflix.com. To ensure accuracy, we recommend copying and pasting each command in turn, pressing enter after each one to run. Our first command creates an empty disk image. At its conclusion, look for confirmation that the image has been created. The second command mounts the disk image we've just created. Incidentally, should anything go wrong after this point, be aware that you may need to reverse these steps by unmounting and deleting the disk image, in order to restart the process. Following this tutorial to its conclusion, we'll also remove the disk image. Once the second command has successfully executed, we see a Monterey DMG icon on the desktop. We now enter the third command. As we're issuing a sudo command for the first time in this project, we receive a request to enter our password, and this is simply the master password used to log on to macOS at the start of every session. This password is entered silently, so don't expect to see stars or symbols to represent your keystrokes. Having entered the password and pressed enter, we now need to type Y and press enter a second time. A short phase of processing takes place, as the installation media is created. Once that command has processed, our fourth can be entered, and the purpose of this command is to unmount the disk image, in order that we can perform further work on it. Once the command is executed, we see the disk image icon disappear from the desktop. In the event that the typed command fails, it may be possible to replicate this step by right clicking the disk image icon on the desktop, and selecting the option to eject. We're now moving forward toward converting the image format with the next two commands. Our fifth command creates a CDR file, which is again visible on the desktop and the sixth further converts that CDR to ISO, giving us the file that can soon be transferred to our Windows machine. Our seventh command cleans up the remaining data from our system, and once we exit terminal, we have concluded this phase of the project, and have finished with macOS. We can now transfer the ISO file to our Windows machine, either over a network, as demonstrated in the video shown on screen now, or by copying to a USB drive, and pasting on the Windows device. We would also advocate archiving the ISO file we've just created, with a view to using it in future installations. Join us in part 2 of this series, when we configure our virtual Mac in VirtualBox, and provide the additional command line arguments which allow the virtual Mac to boot. Check out our back catalogue of more than 100 tech tutorials, and be sure to subscribe to follow our future projects, by clicking the logo shown on screen now. If you'd like to keep watching, there are links on screen to more videos you might find useful. If you can improve our methods, if you need assistance, or if you just want to discuss anything you've seen, get in touch via the comments, we love to hear from you. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you soon for your next tech fix.